Dios. Hi, I hope uh, you can hear me even if you can't see me. So I will turn the camera off in just a minute um, because there was a bit of a lag, but um, hello world. So I'll turn the camera off now. So I will be talking about uh, the work that we did exploring how to bring in linked data uh, to support more open-ended discovery for our end users who are using our catalog. And just before I start, there are, there are a lot of slides in here. I'm not going to be able to go through everything in detail. I just want to let you know that there is documentation and references within the slides, so um, you can always learn more. Uh, but this is really just to give you an idea of our work and see if you have any questions. So I'll start with some uh, acknowledgement and thanks and a brief word on background and motivation. And then uh, do a, like I said, a lightning round of, uh, of examples uh, from our research that we've done in the previous grant. Talk a little bit about the current grant and what we're doing there and then end with a brief word on community engagement. Everything will be brief. There are 43 slides in 15 minutes. Um, so uh, the work that I'm talking about in this presentation uh, comes from the uh, link data for pathways to implementation and link data for production closing the loop grants. These grants are exploring how we can uh, move library systems to the use of linked data from everywhere for metadata production to discovery. And the focus of this talk is really on the discovery aspect. So I want to thank all the people that are, have been involved in these grants, uh, specifically around uh, discovery work. Uh, and again, these are links that you can go to and see yourself. And a special shout out to our informally named Discovery on the Ground or Dog Group. Uh, thank you to Astrid Usong from Stanford for that adorable puppy hug sticker. So without further ado, uh, what is the background and context for this work? Um, library catalogs are usually, folk, their development and design usually focuses on the known item search problem. Uh, if yours doesn't and does more, this is no, by no means an insult. Um, but generally, we want to support use cases where somebody has a, a specific title or author or subject in mind. What we wanted to do in this exploration and these grants was to see if we could bring back uh, context in relevant relationships around the entities that we represent in our catalogs and use that information to support more open-ended discovery tasks. And in that process, be able to uh, redirect our uh, end users uh, to more relevant resources in the catalog. So the questions we've asked throughout are which data sources can provide us interesting information and where are the data connections between library metadata and these data sources? And how can we use this information to support our open-ended discovery tasks that we want users to do? I don't have time to go into the details on the third question very much, except to say that I will mention schema.org briefly in the work we did there to help support catalog resources being more discoverable uh, through search engines. So I mentioned entities in our catalogs, and we do have them. We usually use uh, string authorities like name authorities or authorized subject headings to refer to them. So the work that we have done in the discovery section is, has really been about getting as many URIs as possible um, and then being able to link out to external linked data sources and pull back information from Wikidata, the Library of Congress, OCLC, and other data sources so we can provide a richer experience for our end users. So I'm about to start the lightning round section. I, I cannot at all uh, go through all the details, um, but I do uh, am, am interested in seeing what the audience might think about additional linked data sources as we go through the examples. Can you think of use cases and scenarios? Can you think of ideas um, and uh, tasks that you think would be really interesting and useful to support uh, for end users? So lightning round time. Um, LD4P2, uh, the focus there was really on designing and developing prototypes. So it was really about researching user needs and being able to generate prototypes and see what users thought so we could understand what worked and what didn't. So an example that I'll talk about briefly now are knowledge panels. And the objective of knowledge panels is to bring in context and information 
for authors and for subjects. Um, and to allow users to see, for instance, uh, to get a better sense of who this author is and to bring in influence relationships. So in this case, you're seeing an image and Wikidata relationships related to uh, this person when you click on the info box next to the author heading on, on a particular uh, catalog page. And then the user can click on any of these links and see further search results in the catalog. And this is from the Cornell uh, prototype. Uh, this second example is from the Stanford prototype uh, for uh, LD4P2. In this case, the user has selected an author from the facets on the left. And with this selection, a knowledge panel appears that tells them more information about Beethoven being brought in from Wikidata, uh, things like description, notable work, and occupation. And through the magic of URIs, you can also get a media clip so that people can actually play the clip uh, within the page as they're looking at it. So um, there are a lot more usability results and information, but just to say that this uh, feature, when we test it, generally was well received. Someone called it the bomb.com, which is actually a good thing. Uh, there were comments around, for instance, for the Cornell prototype, it'd be useful to streamline information and different people find different properties more relevant. So a quick word on browsing next. Uh, in, for the browsing area, we wanted to look at categories and relationships. And there were actually lots of things we tried for browsing. I don't have time to go over them, so I will look at, we will look at the author timeline. So for this, we brought in information from the Library of Congress and Wikidata around birth and death dates and start and end activity dates and combine them so the user can see uh, you know, if they're interested in a particular time period or a person, they can see people that lived or worked around the same time. And in this case, uh, the users clicked on Theophanes the Confessor and they see a knowledge panel on the left that gives some more information. And they also see search results that link back to the catalog for this author. So in this case, these are search results that are um, uh, authored by Theophanes. Um, Generally, there was positive feedback for uh, some of our browsing ideas. Subject matter experts thought they, they didn't need as much help. I'll talk about that again in a little bit. Um, the knowledge panels were all uh, client-side driven. In other words, these were all dynamic AJAX queries. Browsing is actually, uh, in many cases, dependent on an index that we set up to combine the data. So a very quick run through some related search results. First one, really I'm bringing up honestly because of Anif. So um, I'll explain that in a minute. This area was to see if we could expose uh, additional subject or people suggestions to people who are searching the catalog. So the user has put in Charles Dickens and they can see subject and people searches. To break this down a little bit further, on the bottom is the list of entity suggestions, and on the top is the knowledge panel that appears when you click on one of them. The one that's selected is actually coming from an Anif Rust API uh, that we set up using a training set uh, for full, with full titles to LCH uh, URIs. And then when the user types in Charles Dickens, Anif takes that information and suggests this subject heading, which is English novelist, 19th century biography. The list of suggestions also comes from other sources like facet strings and a lookup against questioning authority. But again, I don't have a whole lot of time. Generally, the design feedback here was that it'd be good to streamline the information and we need to make the catalog, uh, we need to clarify how the entities are related. And this particular feature, as you saw, the, the, the parts that I demoed, those are all client side driven. So these are all live AJAX requests that are happening. We also played around with auto-suggests. So if the user types in the beginning or part of some part of a name or location or subject or genre string, we want to provide suggestions for them. Um, this combines data from the Library of Congress and Wikidata again. In this example, you're seeing that we have used the see also relationship that exists between these two separate Library of Congress URIs, and each of them actually uh, results in separate search results in the catalog. So when they type in Twain, you can see both of them. You can also see the Wikidata description coming in and click on either one and get results. And we also used Wikidata pseudonym information um, and other source or variant labels in here from Library of Congress. 
So the user feedback for this was, this is fairly generally easy to understand. We had suggestions like, can you add support for misspellings? Um, shared pseudonyms are um, a, a situation where two people, two or more people, share a pseudonym, and uh, there's more work we need to do to make that clear. So generally speaking, um, the work that we did, we often evaluated with non-specialists. We did do interviews with more specialized or with more subject matter experts. And the reason for this is we wanted to help the widest range of people possible. But uh, there was a great uh, presentation by Emma Betcher, which is linked here, where she talked about how in interdisciplinary research, you are you can still be a novice at something. So even if we um, are, focusing on non-specialists, and you happen to be an expert in a domain, you may still find what we are providing as useful in another domain. There were several challenges and opportunities, and there are things that we would have to think about uh, in much greater detail moving these things in these features into production. So um, are you, uh, are we, uh, do we always want to show the information? There may be ethical reasons why we not, uh, we don't want to do that. So we would like to have that uh, control. A lot of the examples that we showed um, were uh, either client side or so a lot of them were index driven. And the reason for that was because we were aggregating information and enabling search across data. But the problem there is that if you want to actually use that index and the data sources are updated, you want to make sure that your index is updated. We could definitely do more with accessibility and please give us URIs in the catalog. The process of reconcil uh, reconciling against string headings for all catalog data is painful. Um, so having those URIs ready would be great. I, like I said, a very quick word on schema.org. This is work that our colleagues at Stanford University and others in the Blacklight community have done. Uh, this uh, takes metadata fields that are available in the Blacklight uh, record, in this case for a data set, and generates schema.org information in JSON-LD. And for this particular example, it actually seems like it's being picked up by a Google dataset search, which is kind of neat. I didn't have time to go into much detail. I did that lightning round. You can uh, definitely go to our wiki and find out a whole lot more, our code demos and lessons learned and usability results. So for LD4P3, which is where we are now, we actually have a two strand approach. One strand is we continue the research and design strand that we had from before, where we think about user needs and think about interesting data sources and then try to evaluate um, how well we can put that together and what that means for the user. So an example that we're working on right now is uh, displaying authorities seamlessly here. Thank you to Stephen Folsom for that label. Where we're thinking about um, almost like a, a, a knowledge panel on steroids. So say that you could get to a page that really describes all the information about the entity from various sources uh, uh, in a comprehensive way. So for instance, let's say you're looking at a subject page, we're thinking about bringing in broader and narrow information, but also temporal and geographic information from data sources like Periodo. Here is a proof of concept um, from uh, my colleague Jesse Keck at Stanford, where he set up a blacklight page that if you give it a URI, will actually tell you which uh, search results are by this person and which self search results are about this person. And you can imagine this having even more information added to it from Wikidata and other sources. For production, we are thinking a lot about how we can um, uh, take this work and move it into production systems. And that opens up a whole different set of questions and uh, groups of people that we need to speak to. Um, I will say that I'm very pleased to say that uh, beginning early next year, we hope to have this particular work uh, integrated into production. So in LD4P2, Tim Worrell and others um, worked on bringing in discogs information to supplement the item record. And it's brought in as JSON LD and uh, added. And with our uh, discussions with our stakeholders and with our discussions with our catalog development team, we are now at a point where this will get merged in. So huge thank you to Tim Worrell and our discovery and access team at Cornell and user representatives. So the general uh, fee of the flow here is you have, you know, our linked data sources, we try to experiment and prototype them, and then we bring them back into our production discovery systems and contribute hopefully back to the Blacklight code and community. 
And then this becomes, a, you could call it a virtuous circle where um, as we are using these linked data sources, we, we may have suggestions for how to make the data sources themselves better. And you can imagine the library catalog data itself becoming a linked data source. There are multiple links here. Um, there is this uh, idea of the LD4 community that will be made more publicly um, or will be announced more publicly in the not too distant future. That first link right now goes to the LD4 conference page, but eventually it will also include information about the LD4 community, which is this idea that these questions and these collaborations we have are not just grant specific. So we have various affinity groups and methods right now where people can come in and engage with these discussions and contribute. And we want to keep that going and expand it further. So please be on the lookout for that. I'm pretty sure I'm either well at time or just about. But I did want to specially end with a warm thanks to the SWIB community. This picture is from a Christmas market I went to at my first SWIB, SWIB Tech 2017. There is a Jason LD and turtle pun or joke you could probably take from this, but it is, it is quite an adorable set of turtles. Um, thank you to the community, as always, for your warmth and generosity and for having me here. And again, if that was all very quick, the slides are there, the references are there, and feel free to reach out with questions. Thank you.